Seventeen Women with a Hundred Real Women, and my name is Teresa Kittredge. I'm the founder of Hundred Real Women, and um, we're just excited to have Senator Julie Rosen with us today. And um, we'll give it a couple more minutes to give people a chance to to join, and um, and then we'll get going. And the, the great thing about this series, um, and I was just sharing this with Senator Rosen, this series really came out of a lot of the research we did where women just wanted to hear from women what their leadership journey has been and what what worked and what didn't and how they navigated and and what their advice is to um to women as we navigate our lives um in rural so we've had a variety of different speakers different ages different sectors race culture all across the board so so we're really excited to um, have senator rosen here with us today and I want to make sure that we make good use of everybody's time. So we're just going to we're going to kick it off here and get going. And um, as people join, we'll just bring them in. So so welcome, Senator Rosen. Um, we're just really honored to have you here today. And just a couple things about 100 Rural Women. 100 Rural Women is really all about making connections and inspiring leadership. And um, we just completed 100 meetings across the state. Um, to learn what would help with women and what what helps women, what supports do you need, what kind of networks do we need, um, and how can we really just better support each other as rural women and get more women serving in decision making leadership roles. That's our our big key. And we are a young woman powered organization. And I just want to take a couple minutes before we get started here to invite um, um, some of our team members our students to introduce themselves. So Emma, why don't you start? All right, hopefully it's not too loud. Sorry, I think there's a plane going right over me. Um, I'm Emma Higgins. I am a research fellow here with 100 Rural Women. I have been working with the organization since May of 2021. So it's been just about a year. And I graduated from undergrad in 2020, have been working through an organization called Lead for Minnesota. Just been doing a lot of running of the meetings, a little bit of grant research. I've kind of worn a lot of hats with the organization, but uh, ultimately I just love connecting and, and just so great to be here with you all this morning. I'll pass it over to Caitlin. Uh, hi, my name is Caitlin. I contract with 100 Rural Women and I do communications work with them. Um, I was with them last summer and I had the chance to get to re rejoin them this summer and I'm really excited to be here today. Caitlin, can you say where you're from? Yeah, um, I am currently in Winona, Minnesota, but I'm from Ellendale, Minnesota. Thanks. How about you, Virginia? Hey, hi, everyone. My name is Virginia Wire. I am a senior at Winona State, and I am interning at 100 Rural Women this summer. Um, this is the end of my first week here at 100 Rural Women, and it has been amazing. I am starting to work with the Reading Room, which is the book club, and uh, I joined the first meeting that I've been to on Wednesday and it was fantastic. Um, so I highly recommend if any of you want to be a part of that, please join. Um, and yeah, this is, um, I'm also going to be working a bit more with communicating in that side of the uh, project as well. I love it. Thanks, Virginia. And um, we have folks joining, but we'll just get started. Um, again, I am thrilled to be able to um, uh, host this Ask a Leading Women today and um, featuring Senator Julie Rosen. And um, I'm Julie, I'm not going to give you a great big um, introduction because we're going to give you 20 minutes, around 20 minutes here, take whatever time you want to really talk about yourself, your leadership journey. And um, I think you'll see a couple familiar faces on here and you're going to see a lot of new faces on here. And that's been the fun thing about doing the work with 100 Rural Women is Every time we have meetings, we see new faces, and that's what it's all about. It's figuring out how we better connect as rural women. So, um, I'm just going to hand it straight over to you to to tell us about yourself, Julie, and and how you ended up, you know, running for the Senate, and just a little bit about what your perspective is. Wonderful. Oh, thank you so much, Teresa, for this opportunity. What a great way to to start the morning and end end the work week with being able to talk about empowering women. And there's three women on this um, Zoom right now that have uh, definitely influenced me. Um, I always say Jean Burkhart, 
is my favorite Democrat that I, <laughs> I love her. And she helped, she probably helped get me to where I am now. And the two commissioners, Len Kammer and Maltner, thank you so much. I've so enjoyed working with you uh, both. And any chance we can talk about getting um, and having examples of women um, and getting them involved in politics and the community service is so, so very important. Um, I, I, I was just telling Teresa and Emma and Virginia that I have never really been a, um, oh, you know, go women or, you know, but we lost so many women in this retirement this last year. And it is, you're gonna see a whole different dynamics at the Capitol. Um, just to go back a little bit, I am originally from Colorado, I was born and raised there. And my mother still lives there. She's 97. And all my brothers and six sisters, there were seven of us. They're all along the front range, all the way down to Albuquerque, Tucson. So uh, very strong ties there. I graduated with a four-year degree in agronomy from Colorado State and never once thought about politics at all. That was not in the wheelhouse. No one in my family. I'm just an anomaly, <laughs> by, and a strange anomaly in my family because no one ever thought about politics. Um, married, have three, I, I was married and have three children. We, I was fortunate to raise them in the Fairmont public school system and um, was fortunate also to stay home and, and raise them for a while and then got very active in the community. I always say kind of cheap free labor and that's important, but I was so adamant about uh, showing an example to my children that you owe something back to your community that you live in doesn't matter what size, but you need to do something, whether it's picking up trash, serving on the school board, serving on some church group or running for state senate. <laughs> and there was a window of opportunity that um, was presented to me. And I, I ran, I, I beat an incumbent. He was only there two years, but um, I, I ran the first time and won and uh, have just recently retired after 20 years in the Senate. So that was a very, very good service to my community, to the area, I feel like, because I had a lot at stake. I left um, a grade schooler, a middle schooler, and a high schooler and went up to the Capitol to serve. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand how difficult that is. And perhaps I didn't do a very good job at explaining the consequences or not consequences. No, I shouldn't say that because the kids turned out really well. They're great. And, but it, it's tough. It's tough for women that still have a family that want to be involved, that come to the table, know they can contribute and they are still solely in charge of the family and keeping it running too. And that's what I faced. So uh, fortunately I did have some help. Um, and that's why it worked. Like I said, the kids have learned a lot and I think they're better people because of my service to the state and to the area. But um, it was, there's a, not a lot of people at the Capitol that understand what the woman goes through. In order to get women, I think, um, involved in politics of any kind, I have noticed that number one, they need to know that they can make a difference. They're not gonna run for the sake of just running. To, just to get their name splashed out there. That is not in their wheelhouse. They need to know that they're not wasting their time and that they can serve the purpose or the district or whatever better than what is presented to them at the time. And that's what I felt too. Um, if, the, if it was a, if it, I'm Republican, but if it was a Democrat that was serving our district really well, I would never have ran against him ever. That's not, no, there was too much, too much at stake. And doesn't really matter when you're a Republican or a Democrat in greater Minnesota, there's very few things that we disagree on. There's a lot more in common. Um, the other thing that women, I believe, really need to um, understand is they, they have to be asked. You have to ask women to get involved because it's not something they're just gonna jump in and just say, yes. There is uh, um, Senator Dick Day was the one, he was the minority leader in the Senate. and he came to a meeting and I was frantically trying to find somebody to run for that Senate district. And uh, he said, no, I want you. And I said, well, I can't, I've got three children at home. My husband travels all the time. There's no possible way. 
And he goes, think about it for two weeks. And so after two weeks, I really felt like, yes, this is an opportunity. I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, which purely and surely says that you don't need to have a poli-sci degree. Uh, you do not need to be a lawyer. You do not need to have been uh, serving on city council or, or a commissioner or um, school board to serve as in the state legislature because everything is, is trial by error. What you need to have though, is that ability to listen, number one. Um, you have to be, um, you have, people need to know that you are listening to them. You're genuinely concerned and you're gonna do your best uh, to try and figure something out for them. That, that I think are the three key issues. The politics part of it that comes into play when you're on the Senate floor or you're in committee, but out with the people that you're serving, they just want to need to know, they just need to know that you are, are going to really try to do something and that you care. Um, and that's, that's, I feel like what I was very good at. And like I said, I've learned um, as I, as I went, <laughs> served 12 years in the minority, two years as the energy chair, which was a tremendous honor. I love that energy topic. And then went back into the minority for four years. And then for the last six years, I've been serving as finance chair, which is um, my favorite job ever, because that really runs, that runs the state, uh, the finances. And we could talk all day long about, you know, what, what I think is going forward, but um, we, we have a huge surplus, but there's a lot of ways that we're looking at it, to, what to do with that surplus. And um, the areas of concern that I have really focused on um, outside of the finance and the energy, and I've served on health and human services for the past 20 years too, and feel very strongly about all those issues. I tended to land in the arena of uh, drug abuse, whether it's meth, opioids, fentanyl, I've done a tremendous amount of work in that area. Mental health has been a huge issue. The child protection, I was on the, I was a chair of the child protection task force. Um, you know, job creations. Um, I've never served on like education or transportation, but of course those are always really important for our area. So tend to, to work on things that have um, landed in the district that were important. With my ag degree, I think I was able to represent that very well without having to sit on the on the committees. Anything that really affects the state um, going forward, I, I've had a hand in in some way, whether it's been in the finance part or the, the policy part. Something that we, some legislators tend to forget is what's best for the state. And I think that's what you always have to remember is what's best for the state. There was a very, um, he was a, one of my dearest friends and he just died uh, two years ago, but he was a Senator, Dwayne Benson. And he always taught me that um, no matter if you're in the minority or you're in the majority, you can get a tremendous amount done if you have relationships and you can develop those relationships at the Capitol. So as, when I was a freshman, um, after my first year, I realized that number one, people didn't understand agriculture in greater Minnesota. And so took a little field trip with all the new freshmen down to Fairmont. It was really fun. It took them to a Hawk set up, but it was a shower in, shower out. Didn't know that. So there's all these senators showering their hair, <laughs> shampooing. It was pretty funny. And the Star Tribune was there. I was taking, taking uh, notes. It was pretty fun. <laughs> and then the other thing uh, that landed in my lap that, that uh, after that first year was the methamphetamine issue and the cooks, the cooking of methamphetamine and all these empty sites and homes and the stealing of anhydrous. And so created along with the help of many, many people and from people across the aisle uh, created the, the largest methamphetamine bill in the nation that dealt with five huge pillars. Um, so you, I think you always have to, number one, remember what's best for this state. And we don't talk about that enough. You also have to remember, as Wayne would say, um, it's about relationships, what's best for the state, and then go from that point. You always can, you can always have your principles. Yes, we get that. but. In the end, what is, what's best for your district, what's best for the state is what we should really concentrate on. Um, stop me when I'm going too far. 
actually, I, you know, I am open up to, to questions because, and I will tell you, I will be completely honest with you. So ask me anything obscure, anything you're dying to ask that you didn't think uh, somebody could uh, will answer honestly, I certainly will.